in 2009, we were then faced with the question of what do we do about two important issues. The first one was that those who were coming out of our schooling system were not meeting the needs of our economy. And they were not able to fill the skilled positions that existed in the economy. And on the other hand, we had a whole portion of people who remained unemployed, remained not in education and training, and essentially were being wasted human capital for the country. So the question we sat down to address in 2009 was how are we going to manage to get more learners with the correct combinations of subjects and the co correct level of results to come out of our schools so that we can begin to address this question of meeting the skills needs for our economy. And we sat down and we said, let's understand what is the nature of the problem that we're facing in the education system in the province. And we identified two sets of factors. The first set of factors is what we called learning-related factors. And those related to the fact that in most of the schools, in townships, in informal settlements, and in rural areas, we were only covering at best 60% of the curriculum each and every year. So learners were not just having backlogs, they were having compounded backlogs as they moved up the schooling system. The second was that educators themselves did not feel confident to teach the entire curriculum. So they would stick to teaching those things that they knew, and they felt very unconfident as a result of a number of curriculum changes that you would know had taken place over a number of years. And they were also not testing on the entire curriculum. So learners would be going into matric, they would be facing a question paper that covered the, the whole of the curriculum, and they would not have learnt it and they would not have been tested on it, so it became a shock. The other thing that we found was that there were no standard ways in which principals were able to measure how far are we in the, with curriculum coverage. What is actually going on in the classroom? Are we assessing? So those who were tasked with managing schools and managing the delivery in the classroom were not, had no tools to be able to make sure that the <laughs> curriculum was being delivered and that they were in a posi position to assess it and they were in a position to remediate it. The other side of the problem was the non-learning factors. Learner and educator discipline, very common for everybody to rock up at quarter to 10 in the morning on a good day, and not at all on other days that were not so good. School safety, very major issue. Learners reporting that they didn't feel safe at school. Schools having very high levels of burglaries and so on. Very poor level of hygiene. Very, very poor maintenance of infrastructure. All the problems that come with poverty, family disintegration, substance abuse, guns, knives, drugs, into schools. And the whole issue of school disruptions. In 2009, we looked at Soweto. And we found that in Soweto, that on average, there were almost two months of teaching time being lost every year as a result of unprotected labor action, community protests, student disruptions, <coughs> and other things. Nobody would dream of taking a whole lot of children out of school from Parktown Girls High to go and sing the anthem at some event. But it's common practice to go to a school in Soweto and take matrix out and let them go and sing the anthem at some event. So, we realized when we sat down and we, we wanted to develop a st strategies to combat these things, that we were going to have to have a series of strategies that were going to address the learning-related issues, 
but we were also going to have to have a whole range of strategies that were going to address those issues that were not learning related.